Hello friends, welcome to our video series of System Developer Design Verification. In this video, we are going to discuss about User Defined Data Type. So first, we are going to discuss about Enumerated Data Type. So Enumerated Data Type, basically uh, commonly known as Enum, and it's a user defined data type in a programming language that allow you to create a set of named constant representing a list of discrete value. Also, it provides you a convenient way to represent a finite set of possible values with meaningful name. And it makes your code readable and maintainable. Now, another way, we can say that it's kind of a creating a label, custom label, for each of the data item in a set. So, for example, with the enum data type, you can define a list of day of a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. So instead of using numbers to represent each day, you can give each num each day a specific name or a specific label. So whenever you are going to use Tuesday, you don't need to remember that's, that it is number two. All you have to simply say is that it is Tuesday. So that's the very relevant example that relevant example of enumerated data type that we are we guys are using in our day-to-day -day life so in programming enumerated data type are used to define a set of name constant for a specific purpose it's like creating a like creating a little dictionary to represent a group of related items this makes the code easier to understand and helps you to prevent any mistake because you are using now meaningful names for your arbitrary arbitrary values so in a nutshell if i'll say that enum data type is like uh, having your own custom set of names for a group of related item that makes your code more organized easy to understand and maintainable so now we will see the syntax of enumerated data type so first you have to mention enum, then the size, then list of the identifier, and then the name of the variable. So size is basically an op optional specifier that indicate the number of bit used to represent the enumerated data type. So if it is not specified, then the size is determined based on the number of element in the list. So the second list of the identifier is basically the, basically the list of the named constant that makes up the enumerated type. And the third is the, na the, name, of the name of the enumerated data type, which is the variable name. Now we will see some of the example to understand it more clearly. So the first example here that we are seeing is enum. Then here we are not uh, defining any uh, data type and then the list of the identifier and then the variable name so if you're not mentioning any uh, number here so it will automatically start from zero and then proceed one by one from one from zero to one two and three so here ideal is a label for zero start is a label for one pause is a label for two and done is a label for three by default if you're not mentioning any data type then it will it will take int as a default data type now the second example here, as you can see, we are specifically mentioning data type called bit and the size of it. So in the same way, this is bit type uh, uh, enumerated data type where uh, same zero is the ideal is the label for zero, start is the label for one, pause the label for two, and then is the label for three. Now as you can see in the next uh, example, here we are uh, defining the size of the bit data type is 00. zero. Now, if you are going to use, uh, if you are going to use uh, this uh, enumerated data type in this question, then it will prompt you an error. And the reason is quite simple, that we we basically need minimum of two bit to represent these four labels. Now, the question arises that if you are not defining any size here, then will it be fine, or will it take the size according to the number of identifiers here? The answer is no. The reason is quite simple. As we all know that bit has one bit a width. So you have to specifically, specifically mention the size of the bit. By default, if you are not mentioning, then it will consider bit as one bit width. 
In a similar fashion, in spite of using bit, if you are using logic, then also the issue will be same because the reason is same. The logic is also one bit width. Now you can see that in our first example, we were not facing any uh, such kind of error. The answer is simple that by default, if you are not uh, defining any data type, it will be taking it as int. And we all know that int is 32 bit data type. And here in this example, minimum we need two bit data type. Now, now in the next example, I would like to show you that if you specifically mention any uh, number for your label, like here in this case, we are mentioning four for ideal, then by default, the next subsequent uh, label will take the subsequent number. So ideal will be the label for four, start with the label for, uh, start with the label for five, pause will be the label for six and done will be the, done will be the label for seven. So now with this example, you can understand the advantage of enum. So here we are combining all those labels under one variable name. So that is the biggest, biggest advantage of using enum. These kind of things are predominantly used in coding, FSM, control signal, and representing option for or configuration setting. Now with this, I think you are now able to understand what enumerated data type. So we will move forward to our next slide, which is type def, which is a user defined data type. So type type basically is a keyword used to define custom data type. It basically allow programmers to define more descriptive and meaningful name for complex or user defined data type. It makes code more easier and easier to understand and more maintainable. So in system Verilog, you can, you, you can use type def to create an alias of alias for primitive data type, enumerated data type, or complex data structure like union, array, or structure. Now we will see the syntax of for type def to create an alias for enumerated data type. So here first we have to type, first we have to write type def, then enum, and in the same fashion. We have to write uh, size and list of identifier and name that we have seen in the previous slide. But here this name is not the name of the variable, but it indicates the data type name. Now the size is nothing, it's just a number of bit, which is optional that we have seen in the previous slide only. And then the list of identifier is a list of name constant. So now we will see some example to understand it and more clearly. So the first example, as you can see here is type def, which is, which is used to create alias for struct. So in this struct, we are combining two data type, data of bit width eight and valid of bit width one. And these two are clubbed together using struct and a variable and a, and a variable and a data type, sorry, my packet T is created using type def. So this my packet t data type you can use to create multiple variable throughout. So now in the second example, we are using type def to create alias for enum. Here we are using logic of bit width two. And uh, inside it, we are creating idle, which is a level of zero zero start, which is a level of zero one pause, which is a level of one zero and done, which is a level of one one. And we are creating this data type called state T, which hold all those things. So with this data type, we can create multiple variable. So this here in this part of the code, we are, uh, this state T is acting as a data type and this current state and next state is acting as a variable. Now this variable you can use throughout multiple places in your code. So now with this example, you might, you might have understood the major advantage of using type diff. So as we are creating these variables, current time, current state and next state. So we don't need to require, we don't require to 
define these ideal state, pause and done state again and again for both current state and next state. It's just that this data type state T is taking care of, taking care of us. So this is the main advantage of using time dev. So now I think you have understood how you can use type dev to create an alias for primitive data type create an alias of primitive data type like int, bit, logic, or some complex thing like struct or enum. So I hope you understood the use of user-defined data type. And with this, thank you very much. Please like, share, and subscribe.